Smugglers in Gatwick. He looks for cocaine and heroin, so he's a Class A drug dog. A £200 million fraud spirals out of control. It's too much of a good thing. They did get greedy. And officers are on the hunt for illegal fags in Bristol. Like, possibly the one that just went through. And that, that looked like it did have quite a few in that one. Bristol, Anne and Erica are on the hunt for tobacco smugglers. This is the um, Dalaman flight coming from Turkey, currently not in the EU, and um, the allowance for that is only 200 cigarettes. Tobacco is now so highly taxed, the black market is booming, and nearly one in five cigarettes smoked in the UK is illegal, either counterfeit or smuggled in illegally, avoiding UK duty. We'll be looking for anything over about 400, really, at the moment. Like, possibly the one that just went through. And that, that looked like it did have quite a few in that one, so... Joe stops the passenger, whose attempt to dodge duty looks set to end in tears. Right, basically, we've got a female passenger who's come in from Turkey. And she's got 1,800 cigarettes. So what I'm going to do today is seize 1,600 cigarettes off her and give her back 200 as a statutory allowance. I'm not sure how she'd take it. I don't think she'd be too happy, but I don't think she'd be angry. I think she'd be more upset, which is harder, usually. <laughs> don't mind a bit of um, anger, but it's just when they cry, which is a bit difficult. As, you're, as you know, you are over the allowance. Um, the allowance is 200, OK? Um, on this occasion, I'm going to give you the 200 allowance back. That's all I can do. I can't do anything more than that, I'm afraid. So I've just spent all that money on that one. Sorry? Well, I'm, I'm afraid that's, there's not really a lot more I can do. Can I have 400, then? Sorry? No, you can only have the statutory allowance. I'm afraid just 200. Gives me no pleasure to seize these cigarettes. This is when this is amount. I have, I have no choice, I'm afraid. OK? OK. And I just knew, I could feel when I, when I pulled through nothing to declare, I thought, uh-oh, he's got me. I just see the gleam in his eye. I generally felt bad because, uh, although I believe she, she knew um, she knew what the allowances were, she, I still think for anyone it's still difficult to, to have money taken from you. The passenger seems surprised, but it turns out Joe has caught a regular offender. I've got away with it for about nine years. Well, I shouldn't have said that because he's just behind me there. <laughs> it may be a small seizure, but replacing the cigarettes will cost the passenger hundreds of pounds. In Gatwick, the X-ray has picked up a bag with some suspicious contents. It's put back on the carousel while Calvin watches from a distance to identify the bag's owner. The passenger's girlfriend is walking ahead, a tactic often used by smugglers to avoid detection. Calvin follows the passenger through the channels, where the Class A drugs dog Rossi gives an indication on the same blue bag. The questions asked by the officers are seemingly obvious, but the answers given can be used to build up a prosecution if anything's found. So this is all your bag? Is there your baggage, sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah and these are bags you took out with you? Yeah. So, would you give neither anything to bring into this country? Okay, just have a quick look in the blue bag then. No, just the blue one, is it? We'll start with that one. We'll start with that one. Always we'll start with the bottom one. See what this is? Don't touch it. No. Okay, blow booze to be dry. The suitcase is full of sealed packages, which look like cannabis. The couple are arrested immediately. I mentioned when questioned, something which later rely on in court. Anything you do so may be given evidence. Do you both understand? Do you understand? Is that yes? Do you understand? Yep? Yeah? Okay. All right, let's take out the back now. 
Cannabis is a class C drug, but a quantity like this is worth thousands of pounds, so the investigation starts immediately. And Calvin needs to make sure the right people feel the full force of the law. Between 10 and 15, probably. It's probably like 15 kilos. I mean, obviously, we'll have to spike it first and test it to establish, do a field test to establish which the drug is. I'm making an assumption that it's cannabis. Okay, and he'll explain your legal rights. Whatever the packages contain, it's not looking good for this suspect. Off the coast of Cornwall, Customs Cutter Searcher is waiting for orders. We just had uh, some intelligence come in. Basically, they found a length of rope with an anchor. There's nothing to say it's what it is, what it's for, but the locals have never seen it before. They don't know what it's about. They've handed it into customs and said, we think there's a bit, something a bit iffy about that. This is a very old way of smuggling. It's actually putting things in the bottom and putting in a boy and actually hanging it off the rope. It's been doing around here for hundreds of years with brandy in the old days, but it's happened before with drugs. Okay, full speed cap, full speed cap. Searchers crew man the vessel 24 hours a day, ready to respond to any threat to the UK's borders. With over 5,000 drug seizures a year, the threat's very real, and smugglers use any tricks they can to slip through the net. Just, off, just the green part. There's another three there. Uh -huh. There's another one there. So the whole place is full. It costs millions to operate these high-powered vessels with their onboard speedboats, but they're at war with well-financed criminal gangs who can make millions from a single importation and are willing to protect their profits with force. Got, it's still got light, we won't have it for much longer. Um, so I'll have to be as quick as we possibly can here to try and get this job done. Have you seen any, any cops you don't recognise? Yeah. Local fishermen are a good source of information, and there have been unusual pot markers sighted in the area. There's a dead body on the end of this, and we're going to be at in the failing light, the officers check as many markers as they can. Chris? It's a real one, isn't it? Yeah. It's There's one back here as well. Yeah. There's one more, Woody. This might be the golden nugget. <laughs> I think there are parts in there. What do you say? What do you reckon? Go back here, I reckon. Yeah. Not all operations end with a seizure, and Kirsty hopes the intelligence gathered here may prove valuable in catching future smugglers. So what we'll do, we'll actually pass that information back inland, and we'll pass it back to intelligence to see whether they can match it with any other activity that's been going on, and potentially keep an eye on that area just to make sure that we know where to find it and what the potential of it is. Gatwick, the custody suite is where suspected smugglers are welcomed back into the UK. It's a significant seizure, but Calvin's job now is to make sure everyone involved in the importation is identified and prosecuted. What are you doing? Right, sit, sit down, just sit down. All we do is we'll let the custody officer know you're here, OK? And then he'll come and see you and explain your legal rights. OK? Sit down, man. Set the green channel, north terminal. North terminal. And opened a blue suitcase, which he did. Unzipped it, found it to contain foam under the foam with tape back patches, which I believe to be controlled drugs. 11.38. Cell number two. Before we do, can you take your shoes off and leave them outside and your belt? I'll get, I'll get you. You've got a blank, am I being? You take your shoes off now. Just leave them outside here. Good. Do you want any 
drink of water or anything? No, sure? OK. How about cigarettes? You can't smoke here, I'm afraid. And the name on this bag relates to the female. So that will tie her into this bag. As well as it's unclear who's involved, so the female passenger must also be kept in custody. But it looks like there could be controlled drugs in one of the bags. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Sorry? No, I don't know yet. They will find out when they do, and let me know. Let me know. We just suspected that they are drugs at the moment. Calvin suspects the packages contain cannabis. And the smell is unmistakable. We check them all just to make sure they all are cannabis rather than we've had a concealment before where some have been cannabis and some been cocaine. They do all contain cannabis. And the weight of the packages is 20.63 kilos. It's a huge amount of drugs off the streets. Still to come, suspected cocaine smugglers in Gatwick. You swab the bag and they tell you whether or not the bag's been contaminated with drugs. Coming up. A positive drug swab means an intimate body search for this passenger. Please don't make any sudden movement. I will be going into your groin at some point. Over a thousand kilos of cocaine is seized by customs in the UK each year. And Gatwick is a prime point of entry. Sniffer dogs are used on the front line in this fight against Class A smugglers. He looks for cocaine and heroin, so he's a Class A drugs dog. Trace smells or large amounts of uh, that kind of scent, that's what he goes for. This passenger was stopped by immigration officers and has now been brought into customs to be searched. Sniffer dog Rossi picks up a scent from one of his bags and gives the signal to the officers. But picking up a scent isn't enough. Officers must find the drugs before someone can be charged. UK Customs, OK. Is that your bag, yeah? Who paid for your ticket? Yeah, I paid for somebody else. Someone booked it for you, but you gave them the money, yeah? And how do you know this person? How do you know the person who booked it? It's a close friend. He's nervous and his story sounds suspicious. Just take a swab of your bag, your things. It tells me whether or not you've been in contact with drugs at all, OK? OK, if you just bear with me a sec again. Basically, you swab the bag and we have two machines um, and they tell you whether or not the bag's been contaminated with drugs. Like, just give them the reading now, showing that there's, it's picked up particles of cocaine. Could indicate the one, that they could be a user. Um, at some point, there's been drugs within the bag. There's stuff there now, or stuff on their person. Obviously, you've got to go down every avenue and rule out every avenue. I've got a reading for cocaine from your bag and from your clothes and from your laptop bag. OK, can I just ask, do you use at all? Huh? Do you use cocaine at all? Have you used cocaine in Trinidad? No, OK. Finding nothing in the bag, Alex requests authority for a body search. Uh, can I have a request for an SOP, please? That's been authorised, that's fine. I've given my reasons, gave him four reasons. Why? Nervous to more. Eye track reading, dog indication, and he's got very little luggage for two weeks' stay. What I'm going to do now is take him into the search room and conduct a search. Okay, I'm not going to touch any skin, okay? I've got no need to, obviously I can see. If I can just ask you to place your arms out for me. I'll put your palms up into the air, okay? Please don't make any sudden movement. I'm going to do one side at a time. I will be going into your groin at some point, okay? But I will make you aware when I do that. Okay, again, I'm going into your groin. Okay, if you want to take a seat for me, please. But smugglers don't only carry drugs on their bodies. We swapped the inside of the shoes because obviously you have swallowers who come into the UK with packages inside them. Packages give out like sweat and they go into your pores and you sweat through the bottom of your feet. So it can give a reading to say that there's possibly packages inside. So it's another area that we test. 
It's another frustrating result for Alex, but this man's troubles are far from over. OK, if you'd just like to wait by the bench for me. Back to immigration now, yeah, and then they'll make a decision whether they land him from there. But from our side, we're happy. So, from, if you got disappointed on every one person you stopped, you'd be extremely disappointed and you'd probably lose the enthusiasm to keep looking. So, you just get back out there and start again. Stop another passenger. Customs officers in Dover have an entirely different threat to deal with. Thousands of trucks a day pass through the freight lanes, and the detection teams work round the clock to try and spot which ones may have something to hide. One just gone over the top. There it is. I've never seen an unmarked one. The intelligence hub selects most targets, but it's experience which has alerted Richard to this truck, and he decides it's worth searching. Tires in a fridge. I've never seen a, an unmarked fridge on an Omega Pills No Unit before. Never. Especially tires in. Smugglers often use awkward loads like tires as cover, and so customs have developed X-ray machines big enough to scan an entire truck. So we probably might end up scanning it. That's a brand spanky new fridge, and like that's not a refrigerated load. Hey. A little bit odd. The trucks are under pressure to deliver, so this Polish driver isn't happy to learn his truck will have to be scanned. If it finds anything suspicious, it may have to be offloaded, which the driver's company will have to pay for. They get a little bit aggy about it. They don't, they don't like that we do that. <laughs> the X-ray picks up an anomaly. There looks like there may be a secret compartment hidden in the floor. Richard needs to find out what it is, but he doesn't want to cost the driver money if he can avoid it. No, I think it's in the floor. Is it the floor? Yeah. But what is it? Well, I, think, I think it's ribs. We've got to make a decision as to whether this is worth offloading or, 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 or not. The team are all highly trained mechanics, so Richard decides to try to access the suspicious area from underneath. Customs officers also take on gangs involved in carousel fraud, which steal money from the VAT system. It works like this. Criminals set up fake companies to import high-value goods VAT-free. The goods get exported back out to fake companies in Europe, at which point VAT is reclaimed. These shipments get stamped at the border, but then simply turn around and come back into the UK. The same goods go in and out of the country again and again. In 2001, a man was at the centre of a carousel fraud so massive it would take the next six years to bring him to justice. By looking at him and financial profiling of uh, uh, we basically determined that in a space of three years he'd gone from being a, a pallet repairer um, to a multi-millionaire. He'd become a major thorn in the side of, uh, of attacking the UK's uh, VAT system and uh, we, we embarked on what became an eight-month long surveillance operation to identify those he was associating with, those he was trading with. We effectively identified a total of seven people. They, they were just average people, so they weren't particularly well-educated people and certainly uh, not with a business background. Day after day, the surveillance team looked on as the fraud increased. And his six accomplices gradually lost control. The goods were going round and round on the carousel so fast they forgot who was selling what to who. They, they, they became blasé, and uh, as often you see within uh, fraudulent activities, they, they did get greedy. Um, it's, it's too much of a good thing. In May 2002, it culminated in a meeting at the Trafford Centre in Manchester about keeping the fraud on track. And, of course, they were unaware that they were un under surveillance at the time. The surveillance team tracked all the suspects to the meeting and captured it all on film. Whereupon we were all able to get inside and, in fact, get into the CCTV control room for the Trafford Centre, uh, zoom in and record the whole meeting, uh, a surveillance officer's dream. With the gang making around £10 million a week from the fraud, tensions were clearly running high. The meeting at the Trafford Centre was the first time that they'd actually all been filmed together. Come the end of the meeting, when the paperwork appeared to be sorted out, they all got up and it was very jovial, much backslapping, hugging, as if there were no problems. But in fact, their problems were about to get a lot worse. The officers had decided enough was enough. On the morning of the 8th of July 2002, the carousel, the conspiracy was taken out. The 217 fake companies had stolen over 180 million pounds, and it took four years to sift through the mountains of paperwork. 
The nine-month trial found six of the seven guilty as charged, who all received at least five years in prison. Seen as the organizer, received the heaviest sentence. It was the principal who received a 12 and a half year prison sentence. It was a very rewarding result for the effort that had been put in and, and the signal to the criminal fraternity as a whole that um, you know we are going to take these frauds seriously and you do get uh, similar sentences to what you can get in major, major drug cases. Back in Dover, however, a lengthy search has found nothing. I think you've just got to use a bit of common sense at the end. So at the end of the day, we're going to charge you 150 quid to offload it, find nothing, or we just make a judgment. First time in English, the car is on the road, and that's why they have to do it. If they have to, they have to. Richard decides the truck doesn't need to be offloaded, and the happy driver can carry on and deliver his load. But on the bay next door, a white van has been pulled, and this time, it's a hit. The van's full of cigarettes destined for the UK's black market, but not anymore. The drivers have been arrested and taken into custody. They um, stopped the vehicle, questioned them, and uh, whilst they questioned the driver, they um, went in the load and examined the load, and on opening a couple of boxes, one of the pallets, of it's a serious crime, but their efforts to avoid detection aren't quite so easy to take seriously. Obviously, it's failed. 